Hello everyone, today I will be talking about the functions of the amygdala and their respective nuclear nuclei. Now the amygdala is a structure of the brain that is part of the limbic system. It derives from the Greek word amygdale, which means almond, because of its almond shape. Now this structure found rostrally to the hippocampus has 12 to 14 distinct nuclei. We have the lateral nucleus, the basal nucleus, sometimes split into two different components, the parvicellular and the magnocellular component. Um, for the sake of learning today, we will just keep it as the basal nucleus itself. We have the central nucleus, the accessory basal nucleus, the medial nucleus, the periamygdaloid cortex slash nucleus, the cortical nucleus, the nucleus of the lateral olfactory tract, the intercalated nuclei, which are also sometimes split by authors into a medial and lateral component. And again, for the sake of learning, we will just keep it as the intercalated nuclei, as well as the anterior amygdaloid area, and can't be seen on this diagram, is the amygdala striatal zone. Now, each and every single one of these nuclei are split into four different groups that have four different functions. We have the basolateral group, the uh, cortical-like group, there is the centromedial group, and then there is the, um, the transitional group. Now the basolateral group consists of the lateral nucleus, the basal nucleus, the accessory basal nucleus, and the paralaminar nucleus. This group is primarily responsible for one, sensory input integration. Um, what that means is that it receives sensory input from all around our bodies, except our sense of smell, and it, um, it integrates it or associates it with an emotional significance. So for example, if you were to listen to a cheerful song on the radio, uh, auditory stimulus, and it makes you happy, that is what that basolateral group is responsible for doing. It's responsible for integrating that auditory stimulus and making you feel an emotional significance. Now, its second role is its um, involvement in emotional learning and memory. Um, when a stimulus from memory um, is associated with an emotion, for example, if you were to just get through a bad breakup and you hear a song that reminds you of them, although that song may not necessarily be a sad song, like everyone else listening to that song may not necessarily feel sad about it, its, um, it's association with your relationship um, is integrated by the basal lateral group and associates it with an emotion, in this case, sadness. Lastly, it processes the um, our behavior with association to that emotion. For example, if you had just gone through a traumatic experience like the loss of a loved one, it may make you feel like you need to socially withdraw. Um, you may feel like you lack motivation. Um, even it may have physical manifestations such as um, changes in body language and facial expressions. That is what this basal lateral group is responsible for integrating. Now, it's, some, it's very important to note that some people believe that these changes during the time may seem abnormal, but it's important to note that these are absolutely normal and natural. Um, over time, our brain adapts as these um, changes slowly fade away. However, in some extreme cases, our amygdala is extremely persistent in maintaining these behavioral changes. So. Um, that is actually one of the main contributors to why we have certain mental health illnesses such as PTSD, um, depression, and chronic um, anxiety. Now to recount the basolateral group is responsible for one, sensory input integration. To two, is responsible for our emotional learning and memory and three um, behavioral changes. Now yeah, this basal lateral group is responsible for integrating all of these three functions. Now the cortical-like group 
um, consists of the periamygdaloid cortex slash nucleus, the cortical nucleus, and the nucleus of the lateral olfactory tract. Now this group is responsible for one, olfactory processing, olfactory being our sense of smell, and so it directly receives input from, our, from what we smell and associates it with an emotion. For example, if you smell something bad, you may feel disgusted. That is what the cortical-like group is responsible for. Now it's important to note that it is not responsible for associating an emotion from memory with smells. So for example, if you smell something that reminds you of your mom's cooking and it makes you happy, um, that is not entirely processed by the cortical-like group. And I'll explain that later on in the video. Its second responsibility is its regulation of reproductive and social behaviors. When it comes to our smells, this group is directly associated with the hypothalamus, meaning it is responsible for the processing of some autonomic functions, primarily instinctive behaviors and primarily behaviors associated with hormones. When I mean autonomic behavior, I mean behavior that is not taught, something that we are born with, that happens naturally. A primary example is arousal. When we smell pheromones, um, this group processes that smell and sends a response to the hypothalamus to alter our um, sexual arousal. More modulated, less instinctive autonomic behaviors that can be changed but aren't fully regulated by the cortical-like group can include nausea, uh, changing in breathing patterns, and increased heart rate. Less prominent in humans, it can also trigger, when we smell certain pheromones, um, territorial or aggressive behavior, as well as feeding behaviors such as salivation and our behavior when we are hungry. For example, hanger, which is um, when we are hungry and angry, is in fact a real behavioral trait. When we are hungry, the amygdala causes a stress response, causing us to act out. So there you go. Now to recall, the cortical-like group is responsible for olfactory processing, as well as as well as reproductive reproductive and social behavioral changes. Now the central medial group consists of the central nucleus and the medial nucleus. This is our um, primary output center. So it receives a majority of um, the signals from the different types of group that have integrated and associated emotions with the stimulus and they basically send um, that message over to the different portions of our brain. For example, the hypothalamus is responsible for our autonomic response, so um, the central medial group would integrate that and send it over to the hypothalamus so the hypothalamus can do its job. It can also do that with the brainstem and startle reflexes, um, as well as the periaqueductal gray and pain modulation, as well as defensive behaviors. Now, the amygdala as a whole is primarily known for its expression and regulation of fear. Um, for example, in our fight or flight reactions, when we get scared by a sudden noise and we startle, our heart starts to beat faster, we may start to sweat. That is all done, that is all processed within these two groups, then sent over to the central media group, which will then send those, um, those signals to the hypothalamus and brainstem, which causes us to startle and also the other reactions that may be involved in when we are scared. Now to repeat, the centromedial group is our primary output center. Now the transitional group consists of the anterior amygdaloid area, the intercalated nuclei, and as well as the amygdalostriatal zone. Now this group is primarily responsible for refining and integrating information between um, certain structures of our brain, as well as in between um, certain nuclei. The intercalated nuclei, which can be found anywhere in between any of the main nuclei, um, is responsible for integrating information and refining information sent from, um, any, sent from any nuclei to another group. 
for example, the basolateral group to the central mu group would be refined by the intercalated nuclei. The um, anterior amygdaloid area, um, sometimes it is known as the attachment of the amygdala, even though it is directly found within the amygdala, is a broad space of cells that um, is responsible for integrating information to other structures. So it's kind of seen like a bridge to other structures. Now the um, amygdala striatal zone is found above the central nucleus and it is um, found caudal to the striatum and it's seen as a zone of confluence or a transitional zone between the central nucleus and the um, striatum. It's seen as a bridge to those two, um, to those two structures. As mentioned before, emotion like learning and memory from the olfactory system is not necessarily all done by the cortical-like group. Um, it is done by the basolateral group as well as the cortical-like group. The cortical-like group um, takes in the initial smell from the olfactory bulb. However, it is sent to the basolateral group to integrate that memory with that smell. So for example, when we smell food that reminds you of your mom's cooking, um, the corticomedial group does intake that smell and does process the smell. However, it is sent to the basolateral group to also integrate that memory of your mom's cooking to that smell as well. And then it's sent to the central medial group for, um, for the output. Now, a way I like to memorize it is by drawing three different circles. So this outer circle here um, represents the basolateral group, the most lateral circle. You can memorize it like that. We have the center circle, which is our cortico-like group. And then we have the most central circle, the centromedial group. Now from these three circles, we can draw inwards arrows, as well as the plus signs in between to indicate that it's responsible for sensory integration as well as input. Um, I like to draw inwards arrows to, for the cortical-like group, as well as red outwards arrows is to represent that is responsible for some output but it's also primarily responsible for olfactory input um, and last but not least the central medial group we know is responsible for output it's the primary output center so I will draw three arrows pointing outwards so remember inwards arrows for input plus for integration this is responsible for some output but mainly input as well as the central medial group being responsible for primarily output. Now that concludes the functions of the amygdala and their respective nuclei. Thanks for watching.